Hey guys, we are back at Covenant, and today we are building a scaver home on the edge of the settlement, as well as a second home that has collapsed, which you can see there in that uh, shipping container. Now, I wasn't too sure what I was going to build at this location, but a comment from Cosmos on my previous video suggested a new mod called CVC's Dead Wasteland and that mod is awesome by the way it adds a ton of new assets some of which i use in today's build and i'm really excited with the way this turned out i think it looks really cool and i think you're gonna agree so let's get started shall we So we're going to start things off with a car from Thematic and Practical. I feel like a lot of my videos start off that way. But I like building out of cars. What are you going to do? Now for this one, since it's going to be on a hill, we're going to go ahead and angle it using Place Everywhere, just to, so it matches the slope of the ground. And then we're going to go ahead and bury it on in the dirt. That looks pretty good. Nice. With the car in place, we can go ahead and start working on the shipping container. And we're going to use the same technique we used with the vehicle. And we're just going to go ahead and use place everywhere to angle the floor. Just so it matches the slope in the ground. And then we're going to go ahead and bury it on in. Now I am going to jump around a little bit while building the shipping container. The technique is the same for all the pieces. So there's no reason for you to sit there and watch me uh, fiddle with all the different bits. Now the second piece of the floor is a little more tricky just because now that we have the angle set in stone we have to match it and that can be a little difficult. Now you can see I'm just trying to adjust the angle to get all of the edges even. And I don't quite get it. I do adjust it later but it's alright if it's a little off. So now it's time for the walls. Now these are going to be a little more tricky um, but we do want to get them fairly close. Now we also have to worry about them leaning one side or the other and we want to get it as close as possible it's okay if it's off a little bit you know I figured with a shipping container sitting around for 200 years and then falling off its supports it's likely to get tweaked a little bit and be slightly bent but I still want to get it as close to straight as possible and you can see here I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the angle right and I just wiggle it back and forth until it gets into place still don't have it hundred percent but I think we'll get it this time. Just lining it up with that seam there and then just changing the other angle. And I think we just about got it. Nice. Now the container is mostly complete. We just wanna go ahead and finish up the makeshift roof or at least what's left of it. So we're gonna go into CVC Dead Wasteland and grab some of these planks. And we're just gonna go ahead and place them across the roof here. And you can see using place everywhere to just get the angle right. And then moving it down so it makes contact with the roof as well as that wall. And you can see the angle's off there just a little bit. So we just have to tilt it a little bit more and then lower it down. It's also a little bit small so we can just increase the size 10%. And there we go. Now that we have the boards in place, we can take some of this corrugated steel and go ahead and place this on top. Now this is also from CVC's Dead Wasteland, and I'll go ahead and link all the mods I use in a Google Doc in the description. But here, the technique is the same, just changing the angle until it fits. And now for a turret stand, and we're gonna use the car as a base, and we're gonna take one of these quarter boards, and we just wanna glitch that into the vehicle, as well as the ground. And it's okay if it clips quite a bit, we're gonna cover that up with some sandbags. To support the overhang, we're going to take some of these cinder blocks and we're going to stack a couple of them up and just put them underneath this edge here. We just want to line it up with the board so it makes contact but doesn't clip through the top at all. And then for the second support, we'll take a different cinder block and we'll just rotate it using place everywhere and just get it underneath the corner. Just trying to get the angle correct. That looks pretty good. Nice. 
and now for some sandbags. We can use those to actually act as support as well. And so we're just going to go ahead and bury them underneath the board here, just keeping them from clipping through the top of the board at all. And now we can take some sandbags and just cover up where the board is clipping through the, the car there. Now a few more sandbags just to act as a little bit of extra support for the turret here. And we're just going to place them around the base just so it looks like it's being a little bit protected. And now for the final sandbag. Now if you're going to replicate this, make sure you turn off object physics. Otherwise the sandbags just flop all over the place. The final structure for today's build, I want to have an elevated floor, but I don't want to be able to walk underneath it. So we're just going to mess around with the board here until we get the height correct. And then once the height is correct, we're going to go ahead and snap other boards to it. And then we can use place everywhere to adjust the shape. With all the boards in place, we can use place everywhere to just inch them back from clipping with the trees. And you can see that leaves a little bit of a gap there. So we can just add another board and then go ahead and inch that one away from the tree as well. That looks pretty good. And now we just rinse and repeat. With all the floorboards in place, we can go ahead and close off this lower section. And we're going to take one of these walls from the warehouse tab, one of the bombed out ones. And we're just going to line it up with the floorboards there. And I do want it to poke out the front, but not the top. To close off this back side, we're going to go into the homemaker tab. And we're going to grab one of these shack walls, one of the half sized ones. And we're just going to go ahead and place that so it can go around the tree. You see there, I had to shrink it down just a little bit. It was sticking out a little too far. Back to the homemaker tab to finish in closing this tree. We're going to take a different half wall and we're going to shrink that down. And then we just want to go ahead and glitch that into the floorboard there and make sure that it's fairly straight. That looks pretty good. Nice. To finish closing off this backside, we're going to take one of the junk walls from the homemaker tab and just shrink that down so it'll fit underneath the floorboards there. And then we just want to glitch it into the floors so it looks like it's supporting them. We also want it to glitch in with that other half wall just so it looks attached. Almost got it. Nice. For the upper floor, we're going to go ahead and take one of these half walls and just place that down just so we have a way to measure the correct height for the roof. And with the wall in place, we can take one of these quarter floorboards and just glitch it into the top of the wall there. And I think that looks pretty good. Now once that's in place, we can snap the other floorboards to it and then remove the wall. With all the boards in place, we can just use place everywhere to inch all of them back so they're not clipping with the trees at all. We're going to do something a little bit different with the outer walls here and we're going to go into CVC Dead Wasteland again and this time we're going to grab some of these wooden planks and we're just going to use place everywhere to change the angle and then glitch them to these trees just so they look like they're nailed together. Now this is a lot easier than working with the shipping container. You can see there I'm just trying to get it so it's not actually clipping through at all but we do want them to be attached. It just takes a little bit of fiddling back and forth, but eventually it does get into place. Now for this board, I did have to increase the size a little bit just to get it to span the gap in between the trees. The technique remains the same. We just want to adjust the angle with place everywhere and then go ahead and connect it to the tree, but we don't want it to, you know, clip through too much. You can see there that's way too much clipping, but I do eventually get it in the right place. There we go. I'm really enjoying this technique and I'm definitely going to be using it again. Now for this third wall, we're going to go ahead and take one of these partial walls from the warehouse tab and I just used place everywhere to rotate the angle and then we're going to go ahead and glitch that into place almost like it was a railing. You can see there it has those two wood bits that stick out of the bottom and we just want to glitch those into the floor and we want it to be standing upright as well as not glitching with the tree. Back to the homemaker tab to add a little bit of support for the roof here. We're going to grab some of these shack columns and we're just going to go ahead and place them up against this wall, but we don't want them to clip with the wall at all. 
So we just want to get it nice and close. And then we're going to raise the height so that it makes contact with the roof, but doesn't clip all the way through. That looks pretty good. Now to fill in that wall a little bit, we're going to take one of these ply boards, and we just want to attach that to the two shack columns we placed down earlier, but we don't want them to glitch through at all. So you can see there, I'm just adjusting it slightly just to get it nice and close. Nice. We still have to fill out a little bit of this wall, so we're going to grab one of the railings from Thematic and Practical in the Vendor tab, and we're just going to go ahead and glitch that on into place. Now this one, it's okay if it glitches with the tree, since you're not actually going to be able to see that part of it. So I'm just sliding it on over, and then we can use Place Everywhere to just bring it out a little bit, so you can see some of the uh, wood bits on the outside. Now we're going to take one of the vanilla balcony railings, and we're just going to fill in a little bit of this gap here in the corrugated steel. And we just want to glitch it on into place. And I think that looks pretty good. Nice. Now for the final touch on this wall, we're going to go ahead and take some of these window boards. And we're just going to place that on the wall there. And then we can use place everywhere to inch it back and just glitch them together. Just gives it a little bit more of a junky look to it. Now we're going to need a way to get up there. So we're going to go ahead and build the ladder. And we're going to grab some of these shack columns from the homemaker tab. And I just shrunk it down quite a bit. You can see there I went a little overboard on the shrinking. So we just increase the size and then glitch that into the floorboard. For the rungs, we're going to go ahead and use some of these wooden planks from the Dead Wasteland mod. And we're going to utilize the same technique we used on the walls we built earlier. Just the angle is slightly different. We just want to place it up against the columns there, but we don't want it to glitch through at all. As you can see, we just shrink the planks down and then go ahead and glitch them into place. I'm really happy with the way this ladder turned out. It's probably my favorite one so far. Nice. So here we are at the top of the hill. Let's go ahead and take a walk around the exterior before we take a closer look inside. You can see the... Uh, Shipping container there has been repaired with some corrugated steel before it fell over and it's all rusted out. And of course we have the car here with the uh, turret stand on it, keeping an eye on the water as well as the entryway to this particular home. Coming around this way, of course there are some raider cages and it looks like uh, this guy might be a fisherman. Makes sense, being able to travel down the river. Probably a good way to deliver goods in between settlements as well. Interesting he doesn't have that tethered up at all. Someone could just walk up and take it. Now walking around this other side, we get a little bit better look at that wall we built earlier. I really like the planks attached to the trees there. I think it has a nice real junky look to it. Especially, it's not totally filled in. Almost like there are pieces that are falling off or it's not completely done being built. And that brings us to the shipping container. Now I imagine shipping containers are built in quite often. You know, they're fairly robust. And this one was supported hanging off of that hill there. And you can see that at some point it fell down crushing its supports. And they're just splintering out from underneath the container. Still haven't cleaned that up. That could be dangerous. Now coming around this way, we actually have the entrance into the shipping container. And uh, let's take a closer look, shall we? Now as we head inside, you can see there, there is a shelving unit attached to the wall there. Of course, at this angle, nothing would sit on a shelf. And it's a little overgrown, so I wonder how long it's been sitting damaged here like this. Probably for quite some time. You can see junk starting to collect at the bottom of this thing. Oh, there's the bed that was in here at one time. I hope no one was on that when it fell. And then over here, we can see the supports for the other side. Also splintered out of shape. And of course we have that car 
Looks like there's a seat there. Partially shielded by the roof of the car. That's clever. Then over here, we have our turret stand. Let's take a look at the bottom section of the housing unit we built. You can see over here, he indeed is a fisherman. Looks like uh, the daily catch hanging out to dry. Got a bucket and a machete there as well. Little area for cooking. And then of course, underneath the structure, there's quite a bit of junk under there it looks like. closer look at that wall that we built has a very uh, thrown together look to it with the wood and corrugated steel mix I really like how the building is kind of coming out of the trees I'm just happy with the way that turned out and you can see inside that storage area a little better now looks like some barrels and crates and a uh, torn apart Nuka-Cola machine. Quite the assortment of scrap underneath there. Even some empty bottles. And of course, uh, some explosives it looks like as well. Well, let's climb this ladder and take a look upstairs, shall we? I really like the way that ladder turned out. I don't know if I've said that enough. So here we are upstairs, and there's our fisherman, just hanging out. Looks like he has some uh, beer set out, as well as a little bit of jet. And coming inside here, a little chem station. Looks like some blood leaf and some glowing fungus. Wonder what he's making there. Of course we have a mattress to sleep on. And then over on the opposite side, we have more beer, as well as a little bit of ammo, and of course some paint. I mean, this is a pack settlement after all. That brings us back around to the entrance, which gives a great view of the wasteland around. And of course, of the river as well. Now we can take another look at the walls that we built earlier. I'm really happy with the way that turned out, and that's definitely a technique I'm going to be utilizing more in the future. This is one of my favorite builds so far. I know I say that fairly often, but it really is. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions about this build or thoughts on any of my other builds, or you just have any questions in general, or any mod suggestions, I really love checking out new mods. Subscribe if you want to see my next video goes live. We should be back here at Covenant, although I do have some plans uh, for heading to Far Harbor soon. I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and until then, enjoy your time in the Commonwealth.